right? Now, all the things we've talked about so far are at the individual level. And you can extend this logic to think about the aggregate, too. Think about the following case. Think about a world in which I have a bunch of people. They all, they all face the same budget constraint. Okay? They all have that budget constraint. And different people are located at different points along this budget constraint. You know, different people make different choices. That's a reality we have to live with, right? People make different choices. People are they're different. It's always been a tension in economics. We, you know, differences across people, they're, they're kind of a pain in the butt, but they, they kind of exist. But for this problem, it's actually useful. Let's assume that people have picked different points along this budget line. And the average point that people are choosing is right here. That's the average choice. OK? Everybody understand the idea? So this is the budget line. Everybody's got the same budget line. So everybody is in the same market. They face the same prices. They got all about the same nominal income. And some people are buying lots of X1, right? Some people are buying lots of X2. Some people are kind of splitting the difference, spending some money on each. Everybody's got their own. They all live in their own lives, okay? Making their own choices. We don't like to let people do that these days, but these guys get to do it, all right? All right, so these guys are making their own choices. And let's assume prices change in such a way that on average, people can buy what they bought yesterday, okay? To make that happen, what must be true? How, what must happen holding nominal income constant for, on average, people to be able to buy what they bought before. So on average, people are just as well off as they were before from a purchasing power standpoint. Well, clearly, you can't have all prices go up or all prices go down. That would never work. Yeah? The average point should be also in the new budget line. Yeah, exactly. The new budget line is going to have one price has to go up and the other has to go down. And so the budget line is going to pivot. And to keep them being able to buy the same point, we're going to pivot through that point. All right. So on average, you might say prices have really not gone up. For some people, prices have gone up. And for some people, prices have gone down. For whom have prices gone up? Who thinks the new prices are worse than the old prices? The guys, the guys over here, right? The guys clearly way off on the left probably aren't going to be real happy. Right? They can't buy what these guys are ecstatic, right? These guys over here, they, they're for sure better off. They can buy what they had before and they have money left over. So even though incomes are constant on average, they're being redistributed from one group to the other. And in particular, they're being redistributed from the heavy X2 consumers to the heavy X1 consumers. Now, how is that redistribution of income, do you think, is that likely to affect consumption? That is, there's going to be a substitution effect for everybody. What about this aggregate? What about there's no aggregate income change, but income's going up for some people and down for others. How do we expect that to affect consumption? Assume nobody substituted. Assume everybody had right angle and difference curves. Make it simple. Assume everybody, when they started, everybody was completely unwilling to substitute. Perfect compliments. Nobody substitutes individually. What would happen? Yeah, exactly. You would see substitution in aggregate. Because the people who really like X2 are getting less income, so they buy less of both. Whereas the people over here who really like X1 are buying more of both. And therefore, the consumption pattern is going to switch from X1 to X2, I mean, sorry, X2 to X1, which will make it look like people are substituting, even though individuals themselves may not be substituting at all. Right? Because effectively, we're going to make the people who like X1 richer and make the people who like X2 poor. 
Now, it's possible these income effects could go the wrong way. Even these could go the wrong way. And when would they go the wrong way? No, not really inferior goods, per se. What you really need is, I mean, you could do it with inferior goods, but what we really need is average and marginal consumptions to be not going in the same direction. That is, the people who are buying a lot of X1 already, when they get additional income, want to buy X2. And the people who are already buying X2 already, when they get additional income, want to buy X1. Okay, which could happen with inferior goods, but you really don't need that. You really could do it all with normal goods. You just need like marginal propensities to spend on the good in average propensities, which is what you're doing already, to kind of have that inverse relationship. Because when prices change like this, you're going to redistribute income to the people who are already buying X1 away from the people who are already buying X2, which will induce people who are already buying X1 to buy more of whatever they want to buy when they get more income. Now, we usually think, well, that's going to be more X1, because that's what they like. But you could construct a world in which the guys who are already buying X1 have enough X1. They don't want any more X1. And if they got any more income, they'd buy X2 and vice versa. That would flip all this around. And there's a famous theorem by Hugo Sonnenschein that basically says, because of these kind of crazy income effects, you can get anything. Anything can happen in the aggregate. Draw a crazy curve, that could be a demand curve in the aggregate. I, what I would say is I would normally point out, yeah, that can happen. But the most common way that income effects work is actually just to reinforce the story, to work to reinforce the income effect story, the, the, the substitution effect story, working in favor of the law of demand. Okay. So it's possible to go the wrong way. But I think in, in general, we think of it probably more likely to actually to go in the same way, to reinforce the substitution effect, just like for normal goods in the single consumer the income effect reinforces the substitution effect. Any questions that, that people have? So basically, you made the comment about looking at random, so if you look at random in the latter case, you would just hit the midpoint of the budget line. Yeah, but the midpoint would move over to here, right? Yeah, exactly. The midpoint's going to move that way. That's the random choice world. Now, you can even do random choice where you don't spend all your income, in which case you're kind of like in here, and then you're over here. It doesn't really matter. Either one of those will work. Um, then there's a whole question, what do you mean by random? Do you mean you spend a dollar at random? You buy goods at random? There's, there's a million different ways to do it. But the basic idea is when good one gets cheaper, you kind of open up opportunities for one. And when good two gets more expensive, you're closing off opportunities for two. And that opportunity set change in itself kind of is pushing us toward what we call the law of demand. OK? Yes? Is some weird effect that you were mentioning before? Do you have to have a weird uh, utility function then? For which one? Uh, the Giffen good? No, for the, the last case you mentioned. Well, no, you, it's really about differences across consumers. You need, look, whenever we have a change like this, that looks, this is what we call an aggregate compensated change, compensated on prices. That is, prices have changed in such a way that real incomes as measured stayed constant. We increase the price of good one, we reduce the price of, I'm sorry, we reduce the price of good one, increase the price of good two. People can still afford on average what they did before. We know what that's going to do. That's going to redistribute income from the guys who buy lots of X2 to the guys who buy lots of X1. And if you say, well, what's the effect of that redistribution of income? It's going to be make the guys who buy lots of X1 get more of whatever it is they want. And the perverse case is where the guys who buy lots of X1, when they get more income, actually spend it on good two. And the guys who buy lots of X2, when they get less income, really cut back on good one. If you had that world, then you could get kind of a perverse response. And you can construct examples that fit that, OK? I'm not saying you can't even construct reasonable examples that fit that. But if you think about a world where differences on average and marginal tend to go together, it's going to reinforce the substitution effect. Yeah? Uh, you mentioned that most people who consume heavily X1, even if the price of X1 drops, they won't buy more because they have had enough to buy. 
I'm not saying that will happen. I said that could happen. No, you no, could have a situation like that. that they're, they're just kind of crossing that. No, it means it just means they're. Well, I don't want to make them right angles in that case. I would just want to say, I mean, if you had this case, right? So I got this budget line. I got this one. I got this guy here who's buying a lot of X1. If I said, well, and this is where somebody mentioned inferior, if this guy, when the budget line shifted to here, moved way back up into the left, it was like a gift and good for him, well, that's going to really be a crazy income effect because this guy's getting richer and that's pushing him toward less X1. You say, well, if X1's inferior, isn't that what's going to happen? Well, you got this guy with less income. If it was also inferior for him, he'd be getting pushed in the opposite direction on X1. So what you'd like is this, this good to be inferior, X1 to be inferior for him, and you'd like X2 to be inferior for him. Because if X2 was inferior for him, he's getting poorer, so he'd buy more X2 and less X1. So everybody would be moving away from X1. This guy would be moving away from X1 because good one is inferior for him, and he's richer. And this guy would be moving away from X1 because good one is normal, and he's poorer. Yeah. So, I mean, any examples of that? I can't really think of any examples. You know, the, the best examples is case where, like, you can build, like, a model where get, people get a threshold and they buy when they get to a certain point. And then you can have a world where the guys who are already buying a lot, just on the margin, aren't going to buy any much more. And there's a bunch of guys who started to buy who are going to get poorer when, you know, so I'm the lagger buying this good. I'm going to get poorer and it's a normal good, I'll go down, whereas the rich guy's already buying. That's really what you need. Kind of almost like the income elasticity is really low for these guys. And the income, so what you need is that the angle curve is very concave, for example. So these guys, the income elasticity here is really low, and the income elasticity here is, is, is high. Then it will go the wrong, then the income effect will go the wrong way. Because good one got cheaper, but these guys are actually poorer, and those are the marginal consumers of good one. Okay, so like a good example. I mean, you could let me give you an example. Let's say I had a society; it had a bunch of rich people who had cars, and it had poor people who didn't have cars, and then poor people were buying a lot of some other good and not very many cars. Then what happened is cars got cheaper, but this other good got a more expensive. The rich guys are better off, but they already have a car. They don't buy, they don't spend much more on a car. Kind of a counter example because there's lots of ways to spend more money on a car, but let's put that aside. And the poor people who are worse off, not because cars got cheaper, but because this other good got more expensive, actually could no longer afford a car, so they'd buy fewer cars. Then that would be an example where you would get the income effect running the wrong way. Even though everything's normal, it's just the guys on the margin who the car buyers are actually getting poor. The marginal car buyers are getting poor. Okay? And in fact, I should make that point. I mean, 